In the immediate aftermath of Episode 3, Darth Vader would of course be forced to undergo a significant learning curve for how to effectively duel within his new suit and cybernetics. The difficulty Vader would have adjusting to his new capabilities within a suit is depicted differently within the former Legends lore than it has more recently within the current canon. While Vader would have difficulties with the first Jedi he engaged in lightsaber combat following his injuries and defeat to Obi-Wan on Mustafar, the extent of these difficulties differs within both versions of the story. I thought that we'd look at the first Jedi Darth Vader dueled once he was in his suit after Episode 3, as it was seen in both Legends and Canon, demonstrating the differences that exist between them, but also how Vader was ultimately able to overcome his early struggles with the suit to emerge victorious. Let's start with the Legends version of events. Given that there's a gap within Legends, with the end of Episode 3 and then Darth Vader dueling Jedi in numerous different stories, it might be difficult to know exactly which duel represented the Sith Lords first against the Jedi once he was within his new suit. Fortunately, the novel Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader confirms that it was on the planet of Mercana against the Jedi Knight Bolsh Attack, where Vader's new red-bladed lightsaber would strike down its first Jedi. As explained to Vader by his new master Darth Sidious only four weeks after Episode 3, the catalyst for Vader's mission to Mercana was the failure of a group of clone troopers in their refusing to recognize and comply with his Order 66, allowing the Jedi on the planet to escape. Sidious wanted his apprentice to go to Mercana to deal with those who disobeyed the orders of the Emperor, but Vader was more concerned about seeking revenge against the Jedi survivors. While Sidious wasn't concerned with the Jedi, wanting the mission to primarily serve as a reminder of the price of failure, Sidious would allow Vader to confront and destroy any Jedi he came across during the mission, bringing Vader into contact with his first Jedi after being placed within his new suit. Having traveled to the Outer Rim planet of Mercana, Vader was brought the lightsabers of three Jedi who were killed during Order 66. But Vader was quick to note that six Jedi had been assigned to the planet, and when it was revealed the remaining three had escaped, Vader confirmed that was why he traveled to the planet, to deal with the ones who allowed them to escape. At this point, the clone commando climber stepped forward, who was the captain of Ion Team. The captain and the other three commandos of Ion Team admitted that they did refuse Order 66, thinking it might be a trick by the Separatists. Vader was adamant that those decisions weren't for the clones to decide, and instead, they were to simply follow all orders given by the Emperor. Ultimately, although the commandos had bravely stood their ground, Vader would ignite his lightsaber and engage the four clone troopers, who also raised their weapons to fight back against Vader. As the commandos fired upon him, the Sith Lord would deflect their incoming blaster bolts back at two of them, following up with a brutal slash that would leave only two commandos remaining. When the captain and the other remaining commando retreated, Vader ordered his own clone troopers to find them and bring them back alive. However, the three remaining Jedi were watching the entire scene unfold, and while they committed to refrain from interfering to learn more about what was happening within the galaxy over the past week since Order 66, one Jedi wouldn't be able to hold back and attempted to return the favor to the commandos by saving their lives. This was the Zabrik female Jedi Knight, Bolsh Attack. It didn't take long for the duelists to engage each other, with their lightsabers meeting in a violent explosion of light. Within the novel Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader, the details of the duel are provided through the eyes of one of the other Jedi survivors on Mercana, Jedi Master Roan Shrine. Because it was Vader's first duel with a Jedi within a suit, he struggled against the Jedi Knight. It initially looked as though Bolsh Attack might actually defeat Vader. While Vader's moves were defined as clumsy and generally restricted merely to vertical strikes as he relied only on his power, hers were defined by grace and speed as her strikes were broad and circular. In fact, the Jedi Knight was even able to get inside Vader's defenses to score a direct blow to his forearm, causing sparks and smoke to erupt from his cybernetics. However, although Vader completely lacked a style of his own, his power eventually caught up to and overwhelmed the speed of Bolsh attack, removing her weapon arm at the elbow just as Dooku had done to Anakin on Geonosis. The pain caused the defeated Jedi Knight to fall to the ground, and with Vader standing over her, he ended his first duel with a Jedi after Episode 3 by delivering a killing blow. It was a victory for Vader to be sure, but it was unremarkable and a testament to the inexperience he had with his new suit. This fact wasn't lost on Vader, who was enraged after the duel when recognizing that an undistinguished Jedi Knight had been able to break his defenses and injure him, whereas only Dooku, Obi-Wan, and Asajj Ventress had been able to do so before. 
While Vader would certainly improve and emerge as a powerful lightsaber duelist in the months and years after his mission to Mercana, in the moment, it caused him to question just how much he'd fallen since his defeat on Mustafar, and whether his new suit would ever allow him to once again accomplish what he was able to previously. I wouldn't say that Darth Vader's first duel with a Jedi once he obtained his new suit was easier within the current canon lore, I do think it showed him to be far more powerful with the Force and as a lightsaber duelist than his duel with Bolsh attack demonstrated. Vader's first duel with a Jedi in canon is depicted in the first arc of the 2017 Darth Vader comic series. Immediately after Episode 3, with Vader choosing to carry on living as Sidious's apprentice, accepting, insofar as we can use that word, that Padme's death was something that could be used upon his path with the dark side, Sidious would provide his apprentice with his first mission. He would need a new lightsaber worthy of his journey with the Sith and dark side. After explaining the lore behind the red lightsabers of the Sith, pointing out that while the weapons of the Sith were no different than the Jedi, their kyber crystals were made to bleed. Since these crystals were alive, they could feel pain, and therefore, a Sith could pour their own pain into the kyber crystal until it became red through their agony and rage. However, Sidious would also note that a Jedi's kyber crystal, the source of the crystal that would be needed, could not be given, but had to be taken. With that, so he could continue his work together with Sidious, Vader needed a lightsaber, and to construct one, he needed to locate a Jedi who survived Order 66, so he could take their kyber crystal and make it bleed through the dark side. It was a difficult task, given that Order 66 removed the vast majority of Jedi from the galaxy. But after locating a Jedi outpost within the galaxy's mid-rim, dispatching the clone troopers sent there, Vader had an idea. He would search the Jedi records for Jedi who took the Barash vow before Order 66, vowing to refrain from any and all activities involving the Jedi Order, a type of penance that pushed them to focus solely on the Force. Focusing his search in this way, Vader would locate his first Jedi in canon, Jedi Master Kirak and Phila, who is located in the mid-rim on the river moon of Aldulim, and who is unique for the fact that when he was active within the Order, he didn't focus on research, diplomacy, or even training, only fighting, providing Vader with an extremely difficult challenge for his first test against the Jedi. After traveling to the river moon and sensing Kirak upon the top of a mountain, Vader would set off on foot to confront him. Before long, Kirak would reveal himself above Vader, recognizing his power with the dark side and trapping the Sith Lord in the canyon below. As Vader attempted to reach out with the Force to choke the Jedi, Kirak resisted it, then asking Vader if he was the one who destroyed the Jedi Order as he fell through the Force. When Vader confirmed it was him, Kirak knew he had the confrontation he was looking for. Looking to avenge his fallen Jedi, he declared his Barash vow complete. To reach Kirak and his training droid RX, Vader would have to pass through a number of deadly trials. But once Kirak understood why Vader was truly there, and with Vader already passing a number of them, he ordered RX to dismantle the remaining traps. Allowing Vader to confront him, Kirak would appear to implore Vader to keep going. However, this allowed Vader to finally attack Kirak, using the Force to throw large rocks at the Jedi, with one scoring a direct hit. With Kirak recovering, RX came to the defense of the Jedi, attacking Vader. But the training droid was easily lifted by Vader with the Force, and after Vader violently taking a much needed weapon, he threw RX off the mountain to the ground below. This allowed the Jedi Master the time he needed to recover, and as the two engaged each other in a brutal duel, Vader's cybernetics, which had already been damaged by his journey up the mountain, began to fail. As Kirak questioned how someone as weak as Vader was able to destroy the Jedi Order, he realized Vader had to have a Sith Master. When Vader's cybernetic leg then shattered completely under the force of the duel, the Jedi Master promised he would find Vader's Master and destroy him, restoring light to the galaxy. With Vader unable to even stand, Kirak simply used the Force to push him from the mountain, causing the Sith Lord to plunge towards the ground below. Despite finding perhaps the worst landing spot possible, Vader survived the fall, finding that RX did as well, which provided Vader with the parts he needed to repair his suit to once again confront the Jedi Master and take his lightsaber. Only Vader wouldn't find Kirak at the top of the mountain, but within the moon's Ambalar city, attempting to regain his Jedi Starfighter to begin his search for Sidious. Shocked to find that Vader survived, the Sith Lord again challenged Kirak to meet him on top of a dam overlooking the city, a challenge that was quickly accepted. 
When Kirak joined Vader on the dam, the two duelists again engaged each other, the Jedi Master with his lightsaber and Vader with the weapon he still had from RX. After scoring a direct blow to Vader's weapon arm, Kirak taunted Vader, as it again looked as though he had the advantage and was on his way to victory. However, the duel was interrupted by the city's security forces, who warned the Sith and Jedi to end their duel and move off the important piece of infrastructure. But Vader simply lifted them off the ground while force choking them, and then threw them to the ground below. Using the force, Kirak rescued the three individuals, placing them softly on the ground beneath them. Although they survived, the Jedi nevertheless saw the brutality of Vader, calling him a monster, to which Vader then merely agreed. An enraged Vader then used the force to destroy the structure holding back the water from the city. With Kirak recognizing what Vader was doing, he also reached out with the force to prevent the city's destruction, trying to keep the fight between them alone. But Vader mocked the Jedi's foolishness, using the force to finally take his lightsaber. Having obtained the weapon he needed, and with the Jedi Master's attention focused on the ground under them, Vader would this time target Kirak himself, force choking him and raising him over the edge of the dam. With the Jedi's final words, he begged Vader to at least show mercy to the people in the city. But Vader refused, and the final image Kirak would see before Vader broke his neck with the force was the dam being destroyed and the city with it. As Kirak was then dropped into the raging waters, the victorious Vader stood watching with the lightsaber in his hands as the water consumed the entire city. Unlike the story of legends, while Vader definitely struggled against Kirak, he defeated a powerful Jedi Master known for his abilities in combat, overcoming these abilities to duel and defeat his first Jedi within his new suit. So there we have it, the first Jedi Darth Vader defeated in his new suit after Episode 3, as seen in Legends and Canon. Thank you very much to all of the Patreon members of Star Wars Reading Club, as your support is so greatly appreciated. You can find all of our social media links, and a link to our Star Wars gaming channel in the description below, for updates and even more Star Wars content. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For Rx.